Good evening, Rabbi Chag Sameach. We're still in the Hanukkah until the Kohavim, until the stars come out, so we're still in the holiday. Baruch Hashem. There's actually one question that was asked about the holiday yesterday at the Georgian show over here. We had the uh, Netz Minyan downstairs. And uh, the question was, when you read the Torah, you know, we took out yesterday three Sefer Torah, right? Not yesterday, on Shabbat, I'm sorry. On Shabbat, right? On Shabbat, we took out three Sefer Torah. Uh, so the question is, how many times do you say Kaddish, you know, uh, for, for the reading, the Torah reading? So the truth is that there's a machloket about this a little bit. And I'll explain to you how, how it works. You know, there's actually uh, in Chazan Ovadia, Chelet Hanukkah, the rabbi talks about it over there, uh, in this issue, and also in Yerbi Omer, he talks about this issue. Uh, there's also other poskim that talk about it. So the truth is, you know, that there's two different opinions. One says like this, that... Uh, if you, when you finish the Parsha Shavua, you have to say already Kaddish. You know, because you, Parsha Shavua is a complete reading. You know, but the thing is that when we read the Parsha Shavua on Hanukkah and Shabbat, Rosh Chodesh, we, we don't, it doesn't, it's not seven readers, it's six readers, you know, six readers. Shishi finishes the whole thing, he's Mashlim. And then we bring the other Sefer Torah, we read the Rosh Chodesh, and then the third Sefer Torah, we read Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Right, that's the way it is. So how many times do you say Kaddish? So the truth is that there's one opinion which is brought down the Rashbets and also on the uh, uh, Rashbesh and also brought down on the Chida. They say they have to say the Kaddish three times. Three times. Right. Mm-hmm. One time for the Parsha Shavua and then the second time uh, for Rosh Chodesh and then third time again for Hanukkah oh, okay. because each one is a separate reading, you know? So you need three Kaddishim. Mm-hmm. Interesting, right? <laughs> but interesting, right, that uh, there's also another opinion brought down a bit Yosef that you shouldn't say Kaddish after you read the Parsha Shavua. Why is that? Because uh, it's only six readers, you know, but on Shabbat we're supposed to have seven readers, right? So therefore they say, you know, since you didn't have six readers, uh, seven readers, uh, to finish the Parsha Shavua, you didn't really finish yet your reading on Shabbat. You still have to do, right, the, the last one, the, the, so the Shavii, right? You have to do Shavii. So therefore they say you should do Kaddish not after the Shishi, but after, after the Shavii, after the, he reads the Rosh Chodesh, uh-huh. Then you say Kaddish one time, mm-hmm. and then again you read uh, after Hanukkah. Oh, so, so two Kaddish, like, like, two different opinions. So the truth is that Manan Rabbi Yerushalayim he brings down something like in the middle, you know, as so, that there's also a third custom, which is like this, you know, they say that depends on how you did the Parsha Shavua, right? Over here, I know, I come here on Shabbat, I know every time there's always going to be over here Mosif, right, on Shabbat, three Mosif, right, or maybe even more. I don't know. Do they do, do, they do three or more? More. more, more than three, okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, right. You can do, you can do. Yes, you can do. Uh, so you can do uh, Mosif, uh, and a lot of people do it because you know it brings it brings Baruch Hashem money into the shul. It's, it's the car, It's good, you know. It's good for the shul, so the shul, shul can survive. You know, we have more, right? The Kula Mosif, Mosifim, as they say, right? Whoever, whoever adds, they add him more. So they they do Mosif. So says Ma'an Abadia, even according to the opinion that says after Shishi. You can't really do Kaddish. Why? Because you, you didn't have seven readers. But if you did Mosif, right, at least one even, right, even one. Now you did have seven readers. You did have seven. So therefore now you can say Kaddish also after the Parsha Shavua, right? Because that was not six readers, it was seven. Or even more, eight, nine, whatever it was, right? Whatever it is that you did. So it says Maran like this, he passed like this in Chazam Avadiyah. He says that if you had at least one Mosif, so then you can do Kaddish after Parsha Shavua, after Shishi. Right? Even because there was, he's not really Shishi, he's more Shvi'i now, right? whatever it is, right? Uh, and, and you do one more Kaddish after Rosh Chodesh and one more Kaddish after Hanukkah. So this is, he says, this is the Minhag. The Minhag is like this, you know? So if you had Mosif, you do three Kaddish, right? According to this, what the Rabbi says. If you didn't have Mosif, you do two Kaddish. That's the, so that's the Minhag. But the truth is that even if one, let's say, didn't do it this way, right? Did it according to the first Minhag that we mentioned. According to the Rashbetz and the Rashbesh, right? And the, uh, and the Chida. He did one Kaddish after Shishi, even though there was no Mosif. Let's say it was a small Minyan, right? Minyan Metsumtsam. There was no Mosif. He did Kaddish anyway, right? So now, should he do two more Kaddish according to this Minhag? The answer is yes. Because he has to, he has to do for, for Horosh Kaddish another one, and also another one for Hanukkah. So if he did already one Kaddish after Shishi, even though there was no Mosif, he still has to do two more Kaddishim anyway, right? Because uh, each, one, each one needs his own Kaddish. Each separate Torah needs his own Kaddish. That's the way it is. So that's, that's the way it works. So, Baruch Hashem, that's the Minhag. So, uh, you know, the truth is that in most Minyanim, we have Mosif. You know, so therefore, right, uh, there has to be three Kaddishim. 
This is the this is the halacha. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Right. Whatever. Another interesting thing I want to tell you was right, rega- regarding. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Samuk. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Samuch is, you know, in, in a regular week, regular week, right? Regular Parsha Shavua. Samuch is Shishi, you know? And Shvi'i right. is Mashlim, right? But here we only have Shishi, that's all we have, right? So there's really no Samuch uh, like that. There's no Samuch is Hamishi, right? Uh, in, in, in this kind of situation. No, Samuch is Hamishi. Right, that's the thing. When you don't have Mosif, that's exactly what we said, right? Then you have already Shvi'i and everything is good. Okay, very good. That's, that's, the, that's the way it works. Anyway, I'll tell you also, the Hanukkah ends now, you know, uh, and I mentioned uh, somewhere here or there, whatever it was, I mentioned that uh, that these, uh, this Chodesh, you know, it's a uh, Chodesh Tevet, it's really, it says in the Zohar Kadosh, this is not a good month for the Jewish people, not so good. It says in the, in the Zohar Kadosh, three months out of the year were given to the Jewish people and three months given to Esav. So which of the three months given to the Jewish people? It's uh, right, uh, Shabbat, Adar, and Nisan. Right, we have three months in a row. These are the good months for the Jewish people. Good Mazal, you know, good, uh, good fortune, good tidings. Everything is good. The spiritual situation is good. Then we have the other months, right, which are for Esav. What, which one is that? We have uh, Tammuz, and we have Av, and we have Tevet. So these three months are given to Esav. So what does that mean? That he's Sholet. He has more Shlita in these months. He has more Mazal. That's the way it is. You know, that's why they have their holidays now. You know, uh, in, in, in this time, uh, because it's Chodesh Tevet, this is where the Mazal is uh, more strong. That's why they, they do their holidays in the winter like this, you understand? This is the whole thing. This is the reason why they do, the Tevet is really given to Esav. But the truth is, you know, that uh, nevertheless, even though we have this issue, you know, sometimes there's good Mazal, sometimes there's bad Mazal. By the way, the Ritva asked a question about this, you know, a very good question. Doesn't it say in the, in the, in the Talmud, the end Mazal is said, right, says there's no Mazal for the Jewish people. So what, what do you mean by mazal? What mazal? What? Jewish people don't have mazal. You know? We're above the mazal. You know what I mean? So what mazal are you talking about? You know, the Jewish people are above the mazal. What does that mean? It goes according to zechut. Right? It goes according to zechut to Jewish people. If they have good zechut, they're doing Torah and mitzvot, like, like, like they need to do. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives them a aslacha, gives them a success. You know, no, no problems. No matter what, they're above the mazal. You know, the mazal doesn't affect them. You know, uh, and if they're not doing so good, so then it's, you know, right, whatever. But the point is, right, that how can you tell me that there's mazal, this month is good mazal, this month is bad mazal. The Jewish people are above mazal. This is, no, this is, this is the answer, no? So, uh, the, so the truth is that there's an answer to that question. The answer, says the Ritva, is that even though, generally speaking, in general, the Jewish people, there's no mazal for the Jewish people. They're above the mazal. But when it comes to these, these months, you know, uh, Tammuz and Av, so there, Hakadosh Baruch Hu decreed that there should be bad mazal for the Jewish people, and uh, also right in in, uh, in uh, Adar and Nisan, it's good mazal for the Jewish people. So there's a special decree regarding these two these months that there should be good or bad. So there is something like that. Even though in general there's no mazal for the Jewish people, but in those months there is mazal. That's what the Ritva says. One way, one way to answer the question. There's also other ways to answer the question. You can also say, you know, that when it says in mazal Israel, this means for the whole Jewish people there's no mazal. We're above the mazal. You know. But for individuals, you know, for individuals, each person by himself, there is mazal, you know, but not for the whole Jewish people. The whole Jewish people are above mazal. This is also another way to, to answer the issue, right, to answer the question. So there's all, all kinds of discussions about this, you know, in the Chazal, by the way. When does mazal apply to, there's also a famous Gemara, you know what it says, right, that three things are talui by mazal. Also it says in Zohar Kadosh like this. Three things, even for the Jewish people, they're talui by mazal. It's all mazal. What does that mean? What, what, what three things are we talking about? Parnasa, right? And, uh, and uh, Yeladim, right? And uh, marriage, Shiduch, you know, all these things. This is, this is uh, Talud ben Mazal. So what does that mean? How many children this person is supposed to have? It's Mazal. Also, how much Parnasa is going to have, you know? He's going to be millionaire, billionaire, whatever it is, right? 100,000 air, whatever, whatever he has, whatever he makes. It's, it's, it's Talud ben Mazal. It's not really something which is so much Zichut. It's by Mazal. So the truth is, you know, that um, even though this is true, says the Zerah Kadosh, Zerah Kadosh says that if a person has a real tzaddik, you know, he's a real Tami Chacham, he knows Torah very good, he learns Torah all the time, he's a tzaddik, special tzaddik like this, you know, he goes even above the Mazal for those things, you know, he can go above the Mazal. What does that mean? Even though his Mazal was not to be wealthy, you know, to be poor, 
You know, but he can rise above that if he was a, if he's a real tzaddik, if he's a real ben Torah. You know, he can rise above all these things. So what does that mean? A tzaddik, he can rise above every everything in the mazal, everything, no matter what it is. He has a lot of zahut. You know, this is what happened with Abraham Avinu, right? Even though his mazal was to have no children, he had children. Why? Because he was a big tzaddik. You know, Sakdosh Baruch Hu raised them above the mazal, even though his mazal was not good. That's the thing, you know? That's one thing. Also, there's another thing with the Chazal say, that even though there are times which are not good mazal for the Jewish people, by the way, there's also something, another thing. It says in the Gemara, that when you have a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse, you know what that means, eclipse? That means it disappears, right? The moon disappears. Or the sun disappears for a little while, for a few minutes, right? It happens like this, once in a while. They know exactly when it comes, right? The astronomers, they know exactly. They tell you, it's going to be now, it's going to be here, it's going to be there. They know how to calculate the movement of the stars, so they know exactly when it's coming. So they say, you know, that if it's a lunar eclipse, right, that's not a good sign for the Jewish people, Lord Lenu, right? Not good. If it's a solar eclipse, not a good sign for the Goyim. Why is that? Because we go according to the lunar calendar, you know, the, the, the right, and they go according, according to the solar calendar. So they, whatever happens to the solar calendar, if the sun disappears, it's not good for them. It's a, it's a bad seaman for them. For us, it's the moon, because we go according to the moon. We go according to the lunar calendar, right? That's why I tell people all the time, by the way, that, uh, you know, sometimes they ask me, people all the time, they say, oh, it's my English birthday, it's my Hebrew birthday. I tell them, what English birthday? What Hebrew birthday? You have only one birthday. We don't go according to English. We don't go according to the solar calendar. We go according to the lunar calendar. The Jewish people, says the Zohar Kadosh, it's not shayach for them, you know? It's not shayach. Go shayach. It's not shayach for us to go according to the solar calendar. So don't say, you know, if you're a Jew, don't say, oh yeah, my birthday, my English birthday is now, and Two weeks later, my Hebrew birthday. No, there's only one birthday. What, what, what you have two the birthdays? What kind of, what kind of thing is that? <laughs> what kind of, tells you this kind of thing? You, know? but you, you can't dance, you know, they say there's a, there's a <laughs> saying. <laughs> there's a saying in Israel, you know? They say, they say in Israel, you know, the Israelis over there. They say you can't dance at two weddings at one night, you know what I mean? You can, also, you can only dance here or there, you know? Which, one, which wedding do you want to go to? You can't go to both weddings. <laughs> So same thing over here. Same thing, by the way, I tell people, you know, now, right, New Year is coming up, right? Uh, the Goetia New Year. Same thing I tell them, you know, which New Year is yours? You know, you're a Jew. You have one New Year. This is not your New Year, so don't go celebrate, you know, go to, don't go to restaurants, you know, and, uh, you know, dancing and, you know, drinking champagne on New Year's Eve. What? Who told you these things? This is not your New Year. You know, this is, this is for the New Year is for the Goim. They go according to the solar calendar. So this is their New Year, but uh, for us, our New Year is, is the Rosh Hashanah. Like we go according to the lunar calendar. Not shy, not relevant, you know, just have to understand. It's not relevant to you. But by the way, that's besides also the point that uh, there's another issue, you know, which is that, uh, you know, that if you look in the history of the Christians, you know, what they, what they used to do is that on their new year, they used to kill Jews, you know, they had a certain, you know, minhag like this, you know. They used to find kill Jews and kill them, you know. So this was a day of killing Jews, you know, a new year. This is their new year, you understand? So what are you going in, making a party? You're making dancing? But what are you dancing for? What? This was the day they used to kill Jews. You know, this this day. This was their minhag in those times, you know? So what are you, what are you partying about? Are you making a party out of it? What, you, you, like, to, you like to suffer? What, what's with you, with you, right? What kind of thing is that? So you have to understand, right? You have your new year, they have no, their new year. Every person has their own thing, you know? That's the way it is, right? By the way, you should know that when it comes to, when it comes to din, right, mishpat, there's only one day of judgment for the whole world, you know? Rosh Hashanah, is, every, everybody's judged. You know, everybody's judged on the Rosh Hashanah. Nobody's being judged on the on the, this new year. Nobody's who's judging. Nobody's judging anybody. You know, Hashem who judges only only one time a year. That's the Rosh Hashanah. That's it. That's all there is. You know, for them and for us, they're all. Everybody's being judged in this one one day. That's the way it is. You know? So, uh, person has to understand that, right? But nevertheless, what I want to tell you is that they say the Chazal that even though there are times which are, the Mazal is not so good for the Jewish people, as we said, right? Chodesh Tevet, Chodesh Av, Chodesh. Tammuz, right, all these t- times, they say, nevertheless, you should know, or also we have, we said, right, the, the lunar eclipse is not a good sign for the Jewish people, but they say, you know what, if you're a tzaddik, if you're a person who's a tzaddik, you know, and you're keeping the Torah, or the Jewish people together as a, as a whole, or as an individual, one person is a tzaddik, whatever it is, he doesn't have to worry about anything, because he's above the mazal, as we said, you know, a person who's a tzaddik, who's keeping the Torah, he has nothing to worry about, not about the lunar eclipse, not about this eclipse, not about this month, not about that month, if he's a tzaddik, Kadosh Baruch Hu will always take care of him. He's always going to be above, above Mazal, and he's going to be victorious all, over all his enemies. Baruch Amen. 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 Amen.